In this lesson, we are getting into chapter eight, which is our last chapter in this individual income tax formula section. And chapter eight is going to be all about individual income tax computation and then also credit. So how do we take that taxable income that we've calculated? How do we determine the tax liability, keeping in mind those preferential treatments that we had from the last chapter? How do we calculate the amount of tax that's owed? And what credits are taxpayers allowed? We will look at the regular tax liability and you can review from the previous chapters on how to calculate that tax liability based on the taxable income. But then you'll also see there are some different kinds of taxes as well. So there's going to be the kitty tax, there's going to be AMT or alternate minimum tax. There's net investment income tax, and then there's also self-employment tax. So you'll have to determine if your taxpayer has to pay any of those different types of taxes and how to calculate each of those types of taxes. Once you come down to your tax liability, then you need to determine are you eligible for any of the tax credits that are available. And currently there are um, four different types that we are going to look at more in depth. So we are going to look at the child tax credit, the earned income tax credit, the child and dependent care credit, and then also some credits for higher education, such as the lifetime learning credit and the American opportunity tax credit. So you'll look at those different types of credits, determine how to tell if your taxpayer is eligible for any of those credits and the amounts associated with them. And then you'll see for tax year 2021, there were some credits that were just for that tax year. So you'll see what those tax credits were just for 2021 and how those laws may have changed throughout the tax years. After we see what our tax due is or our refund due, we want to look at what are our filing requirements for our taxpayer and then if there are any penalties associated with either late filings or late payments for our taxpayer, we want to be able to calculate those and determine if there are any penalties that our taxpayer will need to pay. So this is the last chapter of our individual income tax formula. Hopefully you have learned a lot about how to calculate the individual taxes. And this will help you when we get to our tax project of filing a form 1040. We will look at each of those concepts within the 1040 and hopefully you'll be able to apply these concepts that you've learned to a fictitious taxpayer. If you have any questions, please reach out and we'd be happy to help you. Have a great day and we will talk to you soon.